Welcome to English worship. Those lights shocked me. Go ahead and stand up and let's praise the Lord.
English worship. Whew, I catch my breath. My name is Elia. I'm on the leadership team here. If it is your first time, we want to say welcome home. And if it's your 30th time, welcome back. Here at English Worship, we live missions. What that means is we want to empower you to see the God-given mission happen in your life, take place, to see you empowered and sent out to reach those around you. And we love to say this here, no matter where you are on your spiritual journey, you're welcome here. So we're going to prepare our hearts. We're going to continue in this time of worship. And if you would just lift your hands with me, we're going to pray. Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for the mission you've called each one of us to, Lord. And we thank you for the work you're starting and continuing in each one of us. We're ready, Lord, to receive whatever it is you have for us today. And God, we know you are the God of breakthrough. And so today, Lord, we come to you saying, move, speak, whatever you want to do, Lord. We're ready. We're ready. Let's worship Jesus.
again, no matter what. No matter what, the light of your grace keeps me lifted. No Thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you never give up on us. You never run out of patience. You never run out of kindness. You never run out of faithfulness, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you will always call us home to you, God. There's no mountain too big. There's no sin so deep. Not even death can keep us from you. We thank you that you have overcome everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He is my faithful Father, calling me out of the dark. I cannot whisper away what he said in the light. He is my firm foundation. My anchor won't be moved. Storms may collide, but my soul is on fire with his word.
again, who are you? that we do not fight against flesh and bone but against principalities and spirits and friends this is our weapon it is praise praise is our weapon the Word of God is our weapon as we declare truth as we sing out truth as we let praise rise up inside of us even when it's difficult, even when we feel attacked, even when we feel like it's impossible or we don't know what to do or are anxious or confused, this is our weapon. It is praise. It is saying to those mountains, who do you think you are? My God is bigger. My God is greater. You will bow low before him. Jesus wins every battle. Jesus wins every war. We are not defeated. We are not defeated, but we stand and praise our God because of who he is. He is Christ Redeemer. He is the overcomer. Hallelujah. We sing Christ, oh, Christ Redeemer.
that you should not follow. Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. And he never will, he never will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you never lose a battle, God. Thank you, Jesus, that you fight for us, that you stand in the gap, that you make a way when we cannot. And we worship you this morning, God. We give you all the glory and all the praise because you deserve it, Lord. And so, God, we prepare our hearts for whatever you want to say today, whatever you want to teach us today, God, we're ready. We continue to lift you high in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You can go ahead and have a seat. Thank you for worshiping with us. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How is everybody today? Good? Good. Awesome. Well, my name is Lauren, and I am on the leadership team here, and it's so great to see you this morning. Um, and I have some announcements for us today. So our first announcement is that we are going to have some fun this evening. So, as some of you might have noticed, we have gone from two services to one over this semester break. But here in this community, we value fun. And so we want to have some fun with all of you tonight, starting at 5 p.m. So if you're like me and you skipped breakfast this morning because you hit the alarm uh, snooze button a little too many times, um, guess what? We can have breakfast for dinner. So come join me and eat your breakfast a lot later than when you were supposed to. Um, and then we're also going to be playing games as well. So you don't want to miss it. You want to come at 5 o'clock. It should be a great time. Um, and because we value fun, uh, we want to show you this really cool recap video from our beach trip that we took a little bit ago. Uh, so if you could turn your attention to the screen and watch the awesomeness. guys that was funny um but yeah that's just an awesome um one of the amazing things we do here in this community so if you're watching that video and you're like man I missed out well come at five o'clock tonight we'll have more fun um so if you are attending English worship and you're like wow I really love this community um what are ways I can get more involved we have this thing called young professionals or young pro. Um, so if you are young and professional, or even if you're not professional, um, if you're older than Mahasi Swa age, uh, then you can join Young Pro. It's an awesome community that meets every other Wednesday, and we are meeting this Wednesday at 6.30. So if you are interested in joining, please contact Vanessa uh, for more information. We're talking about finances, and so it's been really good and really helpful stuff. So you don't want to miss out on that. 
And then our next announcement, if you guys were like, wow, I really missed waking up super early to pray, or I missed out on staying up late to pray, guys, TMP and TNP is back this week. We are having Tuesday morning prayer at 6 a.m. here at the IEC and Thursday night prayer here at 6 p.m. on Thursday at the IN, INC, IEC. <laughs> I combine Thursday night prayer with the IEC at the IEC TNP. So it's a great time to come and pray and really um, practice stepping into deeper times of prayer with God um, around community. So you want to come to that. Okay, for this next announcement, I'm going to need all of your help, okay? Can you do that? Yes. Online people, you as well. You can participate. Can everybody give me a drum roll? Okay, English Worship is looking for a new drummer. And I think you all just audition, auditioned. So, <laughs> just kidding. If you guys know of any drummers or if you yourself are a drummer, um, please contact Aaliyah um, because we are in need of some new drummers to help out with English worship. Guys, this is a really cool worship team. If I could drum, I would. So, if you're out there, you should join. And then for our last announcement is we want to give you an opportunity to be generous with what God has given you. Uh, God can do so much with what little we have. And so uh, in the seat next to you, there are some envelopes if you are a paper person or there is a QR code if you are a um, electronic person. Um, and we just want to, um, yeah, just give you an opportunity to be generous with what God has given us. Uh, so I'm going to pray over the offering, um, and then we're going to hear an amazing sermon from Vanessa. So, Jesus, we just thank you so much for everything that you have given us. God, we thank you that you are a provider and that you see all of our needs and that you meet them. And God, right now, we just want to pray a blessing over this offering, God, that it goes to expand your kingdom and goes to those who need it. And so in your name we pray. Amen. If you could turn your attention to the screen as we prepare our hearts. Fruit of the Spirit, Fruit of the Spirit. Woo! But the Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. The fruit of the Spirit is goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. I always think of like little babies, like you gotta be gentle with a baby. How you treat your mom and your grandma. <laughs> I think gentleness, you know, I think of, you know, when Jesus is called the Good Shepherd, you know, it's like to be able to treat other people and, and sometimes deliver truth, sometimes deliver hard things and uh, even confront people, but with the heart of love and, and uh, love expressed in a gentle way. Hi! <laughs> I feel like there's always this moment of anticipation of like, when am I going to be blind? <laughs> Welcome to English Worship, you guys. On site, online. Hello, online peeps. It's good to see you. Hey, it's lower. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you do not know me, my name is Vanessa. I'm one of the pastors here, and I'm so glad that you have joined us for English Worship. If this is your first time, I'm going to be like the fourth person to tell you welcome. <laughs> if you found this video on YouTube just floating around, hi, welcome to you too. We are almost to the end of the Fruit of the Spirit series. Can you guys believe it? Five points to anybody who can tell me what week this is. What week is this? Hey, hey, good, but five points to you. I don't know what the five points are for, but you have them now. <laughs> We're on week eight, week eight of Fruit of the Spirit. So the past two months, we have been talking about the Fruit of the Spirit as they're found in Galatians 5, and we've been saying it over and over, and we're going to continue to say it over and over because it's true. The Fruit of the Spirit are not something you go out and do. You're not going to, like, go out. Somebody got a message. <laughs> You're not going to go out and make yourself more patient. You're not going to go out and, like, make yourself more loving or faithful. Um, 
it's, that's not what this is. The fruit of the Spirit are something that God does in us as we're filled with him, right? They're the outcome of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And so today we're going to, on week eight, talk about perhaps the most misunderstood of the fruit of the Spirit. All right? So I need you to put on your thinking cap. Get ready to maybe deconstruct some, some stuff and build it back up. All right? We're going to talk about gentleness. Gentleness. But before we do, let's pray. God, we thank you so much that you are good, that you are faithful and kind, and that you are gentle with us. Lord, we pray that you would help us to understand what it means to be gentle, that we might be empowered to be gentle in this world. Glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So most of us in this room have probably prayed at one time or another, God, help me to be more patient with this person. God, I have no joy in my life. Give me joy. Lord, help me to be kind. But I'm willing to bet most of us, if not all of us, have never prayed, God, would you just make me more gentle? Probably never, right? Like, it's not like, Lord, build gentleness inside of me. And uh, I wonder if that is because we really don't understand what gentleness is. So if you were here on Friday night, you may have seen that um, I was playing this game called Pick Up Sticks. Um, and you may have seen us yump, jumping and yelling and getting super rowdy, which really is a testament to a game is only as fun as the people that you play it with. <laughs> Never before have I yelled so loud at a game of pick up sticks. <laughs> um, but it's really because Nikan and JP were there. So thank you for making that fun for me. <laughs> we played that game for an hour. One whole hour, and we were like, yeah, for an hour over pickup sticks. Um, but basically, if you don't know how to play pickup sticks, you grab a bunch of sticks, like toothpick kind of sticks, and then you put them on a table, and then your job is to try to pick up one of the sticks without moving any of the other ones. Like if it shakes even a little bit, you don't get it. So if you watched us play this game, you would have seen about six people making this face. As somebody else was trying to get the little stick, it's like so gently trying not to touch any of the other sticks. And then when they got it, it was like, you know, you're stressed out, <laughs> like watching this person. But then they get it, and you're like, yeah. Or if they didn't get it, you're like, no, you know. Um, and it's just, it's so fun. It's like stressful, but fun. And uh, if you want to play Pick Up Sticks, we can play it at the game night tonight. Um, so the problem with gentleness is that most of us view gentleness like we view Pick Up Sticks. It's like this, like you're trying not to offend anybody. You're trying really hard not to make a mistake. You're trying really hard to talk softly and, and be calm. And you know what? That's stressful. It's stressful to try to be calm and quiet all the time. It's stressful to try to, it's like this never ending game of trying not to drop a fragile object. And we probably, because we think of that, we don't ever want gentleness. Like we don't pray for gentleness, we don't ask for it. But Jesus, when he was on this earth, when he came, he, he gave the Sermon on the Mount, kind of like a blue book on how to succeed in life. And you know what he said? that gentleness is a key to a successful life. What? Matthew 5, 5. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Meek is like the same word translated as gentle. So what he's saying is blessed are the gentle, the whole world belongs to them. The whole world belongs to them. Do you want to have all the doors open for you? Do you want to have a successful life? Be gentle. Gentleness is a key to the kingdom of God, and it can be described as a simple phrase. Gentleness is strength under control. Gentleness is strength under control. If you think of a wild horse, like out somewhere, you know, a wild horse is powerful. Like if you go up and try to touch a wild horse, he's going to bite you. He's going to kick you. He's going to fling his tail at you, right? He is a powerful animal. But because he's wild, 
His energy and his power is not very useful for him or anybody else. A tame horse, a trained horse, you can go up to a tame horse. You can pet a tame horse. You can ride a tame horse. That horse did not become weaker because he's tamed, because he's trained. He's just as strong. But because he can control his strength, now his strength is useful. That's gentleness. Or you think of like a baby, kind of like what uh, was it? Katie said like you're holding a baby. Imagine that you're holding a baby. A baby could grab your finger and squish it as hard as it can, but it's not going to hurt you because a baby's not very strong. It's not being gentle, it's just being weak. You have to learn how to be gentle with holding the baby because you're strong enough to cause it harm. It's the strong hand that needs to learn how to be gentle, not the weak one. Gentleness is strength under control. And strength under control is what we need if we want to have a successful life, like Jesus said. And, you know, this seems very counterintuitive. Like, this is not what we think of when we think of gentleness. And it's probably because we have a lot of misunderstandings. So we're going to do a little bit of myth busting. Did you guys ever watch that show, Myth Busters? Yes? Okay. I mean... You can watch it. It's fine. It's like these two white dudes that are like busting myths. Like people believe these things and then they're like scientists. And so they try to, um, they bust the myths, myth busters. Okay. Anyway, what's what we're going to (laughs) do? We're going to bust the myths about gentleness. Myth number one, gentleness means weakness. Yeah, no, that's a myth, right? Gentleness is not weakness, right? So maybe the reason we ask, we don't ask for gentleness is because we think gentleness is weakness. We think that uh, if you're gentle, people will take advantage of you or people will call you too soft. Or we think that being gentle and shy and insecure and quiet are all the same thing, right? That's what we think of gentleness, but that's not true. There are only two people in the Bible who are called gentle. Can anybody take a gander at who they might be? Jesus is one of them. Who is the other one? Who is the other person called gentle? Not baby Jesus. (laughs) That's the same. Moses. Moses. Moses and Jesus are the only people in the Bible who are called gentle. And these men were not weak. Moses was like the strongest leader in the Old Testament and Jesus is God. Like, not weak at all. And Jesus describes himself as gentle. Like, it's not something to be ashamed of. He describes himself as that. Matthew eleven twenty one, 21. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Many of us have been conditioned to think that people who are strong They have to yell and make big movements. And, you know, when someone challenges them, they get angry and they fight back. You know, you take down your rivals. That's when you're strong. You stand like this and you walk around like this, you know. That's what it means to be strong. But in reality, that's weakness. That's not really strength. If a situation has the power to make you lose control and react in anger, and react in revenge, the situation was stronger than you. If what someone says makes you so upset that you fire back in a mean comment, your emotions were stronger than you. If someone makes you feel so agitated that your heart gets cold and harsh against them, and you make a block in your life, or you start to gossip about them, That's weakness. That's not strength. When someone is truly strong or has authority, they don't need to show it all loud and proud, right? They can calmly and humbly walk into a situation because they have strength. If somebody criticizes somebody in authority, right, or attacks them, the person in authority doesn't have to prove that they have power because they have it right? They can walk into any situation and act strong, gently. So when the king of all creation comes into this world as the person of Jesus, he had all the power. He had all the strength. He could have called down at any time and God would have been like, smite that person. Or he could have been riding around in a cloud being like, you must bow down to me. But he didn't do that. 
He was gentle because he had strength under control. And that's why Jesus could say, come to me. I will serve you. I will love you. I will care for you because I have strength. Gentleness is not weakness. Gentleness is strength under control. Myth number two, only some people are gentle. Only some people are gentle. No. Gentleness <laughs> is for everybody. Gentleness is for everybody. Have you noticed that we like putting qualifiers on things we don't like to do? Like, you don't want to go to the gym, right? So you just want to keep sitting there in your bed. And so you're like, you know what? Only people who have athletic genes go to the gym, you know? It's like only the athletes, only the people who are already fit, they go to the gym. That's not me. I'm not going to the gym. <laughs> or you're struggling with a class and you're like, you know what? Only people who are really good at math are good at coding. And I'm not naturally good at math. So coding is not for me. And we make excuses. It's like, well, that doesn't fit me. That's, that's not who I am. So we don't challenge ourselves to grow or learn about anything, right? And we do the same thing with gentleness. For the most part, aside from being weakness, we think of gentleness as a personality type, right? You know, some people, they're just so soft. Some people are just so kind and gentle. But the rest of us, we can't all be like that. You know, somebody's got to make stuff happen. Somebody's got to push forward. Somebody's going to be a little bit hard, you know? And so because we're not naturally gentle, we think, well, I don't have to grow in that. Or we think that gentleness is part of culture. Javanese people are so gentle. They're so calm. Mongo, Mari, Silakan. But I'm bata. Or I'm, or I'm Timur. Or I'm, you know, Hispanic, whatever. And we're like, no, 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 no. You know, that's our culture. But what are we talking about here? Gentleness is what? A fruit of the Spirit. It's a fruit of the Spirit, which means it's something that God wants to grow inside all of us. It is evidence that God is living inside of us. Now, I want to take a moment to talk to my fellas, my guys, my dudes, my men. Here you go. Hello. I know that you're sitting there in your chair, and you're thinking, this is a girl sermon. This is a girl sermon. Vanessa's going to tell me now I have to start wearing bows in my hair and skipping through meadows. You know, like... Uh, I'm a man. I can't be walking around all soft. I'm supposed to lead myself. I'm supposed to lead my family. I have to be a man. And to you, I want to say, I hear you, okay? I hear you. I see it. I know it. There is a social stigma against being a gentle man, all right? I get it. But I also want us to explore a little bit what the Bible says, because we believe that the word of God is true, and that it leads us to the best way to live, okay? So fellas, this is for you. Come with me to 1 Timothy 6, 11. Timothy is uh, Paul's disciple, and Paul is writing to him. There are some people in his church, they're giving like bad theology, all right? And so Paul says this, talking to Timothy, but you, man of God, free from, flee from all of this, Flee from the bad teaching, flee from the bad theology, and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. You, man of God, pursue gentleness. Yes, you're going to have to run to the right things. Yes, you are going to need to build up your endurance to keep going. Yes, you're going to need some faith, but you know what else you're going to need? You're going to need to learn how to be gentle. You're going to need to learn how to take all of that power, all of that strength, and control it. So that when somebody comes against you, you can respond in love and care. Does that mean you have to start being feminine? No. Does that mean you have to start changing your clothing or your music style? No. What that means is that you are going to be actually strong. And you're going to be able to control your strength, your emotions, your reactions, so that you turn around and act and love. Because if you think about it, that's the manliest thing you could do. And when you do that, you're going to look like Jesus. So man of God, pursue gentleness. Women of God, pursue 
gentleness. Right now, I don't know if you've noticed, but it seems like as a woman, to be strong, we are being told that you got to be rude. You got to go out there and be like, get what you deserve. You have to be harsh. You're not making any grace for anybody else. And we know now that that is actually weakness. That when we go around trying to prove ourselves to everybody, we are living out of weakness. First Peter 3, 4, Paul urges us that you should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. When we are able to live lives of gentleness, that is precious to God. And when we are able to respond in love and care to people who undermine us, to people who do not give us credit for what we do, to people who don't give us opportunities, when we're able to live out in gentleness, that's real strength. We don't have to prove what we already have. Our gentleness is precious to God. Gentleness is strength under control, and it is for all of us. Because at the end of the day, gentleness comes from knowing who you are and who you belong to. That's where gentleness comes from. It's knowing who you are and who you belong to. When we walk in gentleness, it means we don't act out in fear of people who will take advantage of us or walking out of insecurity trying to exert our dominance. You know who you are and whose you are, so who are you? I'll tell you who you are. You're a child of the most high God. You have been cleansed of your sin. You are now a co-heir with Jesus. You are an ambassador of the kingdom of God. You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You have been empowered and anointed to do good works in this world. And so when you walk out into any situation, that situation does not have the power to make you act out in anger. That situation does not have the power to make you passive aggressive or make you cold or make you rude because you have the strength, right? The strength in no succumbing, I am a child of God. When situations are tense, I don't have to fight back. I don't have to prove anything. I know who I am. And who I am is a child of God. When we walk out in God's strength, That's when we walk in gentleness. We're not using our strength to bring other people down so that we could feel higher. We're using God's strength to love them no matter what they do. Gentleness is a mark of those who are in Jesus. So what does gentleness do? Because Jesus said, remember the verse? Blessed are the, the gentle, the whole world belongs to them. Blessed are the gentle, the whole world belongs to them. So why is that? What does gentleness do? If you are taking notes, write down these three things. What does gentleness do? One, gentleness facilitates healthy conflict. Our favorite topic, right? (laughs) Everybody loves conflict. We love confrontation. No, most of us hate it. (laughs) Most of us try to run as far away as we can from it. Or maybe we do love it. You know, some people, they like starting drama. They like starting going around, making problems everywhere. If you are not that, maybe you know somebody like that, right? We're usually on either side of the spectrum. But the truth is, neither one of those is healthy conflict, right? Running away from conflict is not strength. It's weakness. But starting conflict everywhere you go is also weakness. Healthy conflict is necessary, for a healthy life, for a successful life, for a worthwhile life. You're going to need to learn how to have healthy conflict if you're going to have healthy relationships, if you're going to have healthy businesses, if you're going to have healthy partnerships or healthy relationships with your dosen. Conflict is necessary. And the only way to have healthy conflict is gentleness. Gentleness. Galatians 6.1. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. This verse is a little bit interesting because we are so told like, oh, you can't judge anybody. How dare you judge me? How dare you tell me what to do? You know, like we feel like we, we mouse around conflict because we don't want to offend people. We are called to confront sin. We, as the body of Christ, are mandated to confront 
sin because sin is evil. It's robbing the people around us of true life. We are called to bring back people into the right way because the purpose of confrontation is restoration. That's why we confront sin, not to shame people, not to make them feel bad, but because we love them so much that we don't want them to go the wrong way. And so we are called to confront sin in gentleness and love to bring people the right way because we know God's way is the best way they could live. But also, you know, sometimes conflict has nothing to do with sin. Sometimes it's about different opinions. I want to go here. Well, I don't want to go there. But you told me that you were going to. But I don't want to go there. And you start getting so angry at people, right? You have this kind of conflict that is just a conflict of interest. Guess what? You need gentleness there too, (laughs) right? Proverbs 15.1, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. You are not going to make any decision or solve any conflict by yelling at each other. You're not going to solve any conflict by putting up emotional walls and being passive aggressive. The way that you solve problems is gently working out your differences in love. If we're going to have successful lives, we need to learn how to have healthy conflict. And if we're going to do that, we need to grow in gentleness. Number two, gentleness lets God fight your battles. Gentleness lets God fight your battles. Remember what I said about Moses being the only other person who was called gentle? Um, If you look at Moses' life, that's a little bit hard to believe because the dude had like an anger management issue, (laughs) Um, which should give you hope. If you have anger management issues, um, Moses was crazy, okay? One time he was walking around in Egypt and he saw an Egyptian beating up a Hebrew and you know what he did? He killed the Egyptian, like, what? It wasn't even him. It was like he just saw some two dudes nuking it out, and he, was, he got so angry, he killed him. He had the strength. He had the power. He did not have it under control. And because of that, he had to flee the country and live as a shepherd for 40 years. <laughs> 40 years. And, you know, God did some stuff in his life at that time, and he brought him back. And he's like, okay, it's time. we got to take these Hebrews out of here. And so God chose Moses. You know the story with all the plagues and the opening of the Red Sea and stuff? So they get to the desert, and his brother and sister and all the leaders start criticizing him. They start telling him, like, who are you to tell us what to do? Like, you did this and this and this. Why am I following you, you know? Can we just take a moment? People are going to criticize you. People are going to talk about you. They're going to say stuff to your face and behind your back. It's what people do. You know, and sometimes they're going to be a stranger. Sometimes it's going to be your family. Sometimes it's going to be a friend. Okay, it's kind of a fact of life. So what we need to do is think when this happens, not if, when this happens, how am I going to react? When people criticize me or attack me, how am I going to react? You see, before Moses was in the desert, he had a quick temper, killed a man. But the years in the desert taught him how to be gentle, taught him how to be gentle. And it's because Moses learned how to use God's strength, not his own. Our human strength loves to push people down. It loves to make others feel worse so that we feel better. It loves to prove to everybody that we're worthy or that we are powerful. But that is not real strength. God's strength says, I can put my faith on the solid rock, so he's going to take care of me. That's the strength to trust God. It's the strength to keep going. It's the strength to respond in love. And that's kind of what happened to Moses in those 40 years. So when his brother and his sister, Aaron and Miriam, they were bad-mouthing him, they were shaming him in front of everybody, do you know what he did? Nothing. Nothing. He didn't lash back in anger. He didn't shame them. He had the authority. He could have banished them. He could have had them killed, but he didn't. And then God came through. We can read of it in Numbers 12, verse 6. And the Lord said to them, now listen what I say. If there were prophets among you, 
I, the Lord, would reveal myself in visions. I would speak to them in dreams, but not with my servant Moses. Of all my house, he is the one I trust. I speak to him face to face clearly and not in riddles. He sees the Lord as he is. So why were you not afraid to criticize my servant Moses? The Lord was very angry with them, and he departed. As the cloud moved from above the tabernacle, there stood Miriam, her skin as white as snow from leprosy. Do you see what just happened? Somebody came and attacked Moses. They were criticizing him. And because he acted in gentleness, God fought for him. God fought for him. He didn't have to sit there and prove to everybody that he was in charge. God said, I put him in charge. That's why he's there. He didn't have to fight back in revenge and punishment. God did that. When we act in gentleness, when people attack us, it lets God fight our battles. We don't have to prove anything to anyone. When we respond in gentleness, God will fight for us. When we respond in gentleness to somebody saying something to us, it takes away their power to harm us. We're not strong enough to fight at all. We don't have all that it takes to prove ourselves, but guess what? We don't have to. God can fight for us. God can affirm our identity. God can show everybody that we really are who we are. We don't have to prove it. God fights our battles. We don't have to respond in anger or in fear. Gentleness lets God fight our battles. Worship team, if you could come join me. Why is gentleness a key to a successful life? Gentleness is necessary for healthy conflict. If we're going to grow, we need to confront the bad stuff with the right attitude. Gentleness lets God fight our battles. We don't have to be rude or harsh to try to prove ourselves to others. God will take care of us. He will bring justice. He will right the wrong. He will prove them wrong when we trust him. And number three, gentleness is a witness to unbelievers. Gentleness is a witness to unbelievers. In the kingdom of God, a successful life is one where we glorify God and bring others into the kingdom. And when we do that, we're going to look like Jesus. And Jesus was gentle. Jesus was gentle. Have you noticed the world that we live in, it's not gentle. The world that we live in is mean. It's harsh. It cuts people down. There's rudeness. There's shortness. There's passive aggressiveness. And so many of our friends around us and even ourselves, we're walking around with wounds in our hearts and sometimes in our bodies because the world is harsh. When we are gentle in the middle of a crisis, it's a witness to the kind of God we serve. It's a witness to the power and the strength of the love of God. When people see that change in our lives, they're going to be drawn to it because it is so different. It's so different than what is everywhere else. After I graduated from college, I worked in an office. And um, one of my jobs was to answer the phone. Uh, I worked for the complaint department. (laughs) So basically what people did is that they would call and complain about something that we did wrong, you know? And it was angry parents about what their kids had, um, what service their kid had not gotten. And people would yell, people would scream. They would, you know, like, they would threaten to sue us. They would blame us that everything is going on in their lives. This is their fault. And when I started working there, I have to be honest, I was not gentle at all. <laughs> you know, I would have the nice customer service voice like, hello, welcome, how to hear you. You know, yeah, of course, we can do that for you. And as soon as I hung up, it was like, Ugh. you know, oh, make me so angry. And that's kind of how our whole office was. Like, we would get these angry phone calls, and we would just respond with bitterness. We would respond and be like, oh, I can't, she, I mean, I'm trying to help her, and I'm, she's yelling at me, you know? And uh, sometimes we would, like, they had a request. We would push it to the side, like, I don't want to work on this right now. This lady was really mean. Um, but then I started to learn that just because somebody attacks me and is angry at me doesn't mean I have to attack them back, right? And so I was, God was teaching me how to be gentle, and it was not my natural response. It was not what my flesh wanted to do, but God was teaching me. 
And it was more than just about being nice on the phone. I feel like a lot of us have experienced fake gentleness, where somebody is nice to us in a moment, but then they turn around and gossip about us, or, or they try to sabotage something that we do. But God was teaching me to react gently even when the person wasn't there on how I handled their complaint, on how I fixed all the other things. And when I did that, I realized that one of my coworkers, she started coming a lot to my desk. And she kept like telling me all of her stuff and kind of sharing with me her troubles. She didn't follow Jesus, but she would ask me to pray with her. She would ask me for encouragement or advice. And I realized it was because she saw me be gentle to somebody else. And she could trust me with her life because she knew I was going to react in gentleness. When people attack us, when people criticize us, when people are short with us, when people do not give us the credit that we're due and we respond in gentleness, it is a witness to the power of God. It is a witness to the love of God. And it's not only for the person receiving our gentleness, it's for everybody else watching. Because they're wounded, because they're hurting, and they're longing for something. They're longing for somewhere to go where people are not going to be fake with them and be nice in their face but turn around and talk about them. They're longing for someone who will gently take care of them. In this harsh world, in this crazy world, the greatest weapon that we have, the greatest tool that we have to bring people to be attracted to the God of the universe is when we respond in gentleness. Blessed are those who are gentle. The whole world belongs to them. Will you join in standing up with me? I know today was a little bit different. It's a little bit, you know, calm. We're talking about gentleness after all. But we're going to do something that most of us have probably never done. We're not going to sing. There's just going to be music playing in the background. And we are going to ask the Lord to grow gentleness in us. Because we all have those people in our life that push our buttons and make us react like that. Maybe we don't kill them, but we block them out of our hearts. We want to hurt them because they hurt us. And the Lord wants to build the strength in us to know we don't have to fight back. God will fight our battles. We don't have to run away from confrontation. We can learn how to do it in a healthy way. So we're just going to have this moment of letting the Lord deal with you. Ask the Lord for gentleness. Ask the Lord to grow that inside of you. Let's see what it's like to live a life full of actual strength. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are gentle with us, that you are powerful and strong, that you could smite us at any moment, and yet you decide to love and serve us in gentleness. Lord Jesus, I pray, 
that as we live out this life where we have been wounded, where we have been hurt, Lord, that you, we would allow your love to heal, that we might not act out in revenge, that we might not try to hurt those who have hurt us, Lord, but that we would stand strong in our identity of who we are in you and be able to love and care those who hurt us, to be able to respond in gentleness when people are mean or rude or harsh. When people underestimate us, we would still be able to serve them because we are secure in who we are in you, Lord. May we be a people who are known for our gentleness, that we don't have to prove anything to anyone. We will walk out in the, the, the sureness that we have in who you are. Lord God, I pray for those who live in fear, who try not to uh, offend anyone, Lord, that you would build our identity and strength in you. For those of us who struggle with our anger or, or our revenge or bitterness, Lord God, I pray that you would give us the power to control them. That you give us the power to love and not hate, to love and not fear, to love like you love. That as we live out this life in gentleness, the world will know that you are good and you are God and you are here. We glorify your name, Jesus. Because you are so good. You are the God who is gentle. And we can come to you. We can come to you. Thank you, Jesus. Will you lift up your hands to receive the blessing of the Lord? God, I thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness and your gentleness. I bless my brothers and sisters with a knowledge of their identity in you, that they would get their strength from who you are and not who they are. Lord, that they may be able to react in gentleness in their workplace, with their families, with their coastmates, Lord God, with their classmates, that with anyone that they meet, that they would walk in gentleness. Lord, I pray that this week, your name would be glorified in them as they live out a life of gentleness, of strength under control. I pray that you would bless their finances, bless their work and their play, bless their relationships, Lord Jesus, that they may know you in every part of their lives. I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There will be people here in the front who want to pray. If you're struggling with anger, if you're struggling with hurt, let God deal with that. Let him heal that so that you can walk in strength under control. Don't forget your sticker. We'll see you guys tonight. May the Lord bless you.